so we're going to start our um, cover of virology with basic viral structure. All right, and um, so a couple things we need to know about you know a virus before we really get into this, um, uh, and we start to talk about uh, some of the different parts of uh, the structure of a virus. First off, is that um, a virus isn't a cell; right. it is a cellular parasite. So it is uh, a virus. is an obligate intracellular parasite. And that's because uh, a virus doesn't have uh, any metabolism of itself. So a virus has no metabolism, no ability to make ATP uh, for itself. It has no ribosomes, so it can't produce uh, any of its own proteins. Uh, it needs another cell to do all these things for it. Right. Uh, a virus does have its own genome. And that genome uh, is either DNA or RNA, and it could be double-stranded or single-stranded DNA. It could be double-stranded or single-stranded RNA. Now, there's a couple of strange things about that. DNA is defined usually as a double-stranded molecule, and RNA is defined as a single-stranded structure. Um, but what we'll find in a virus for a viral genome is that some viral genomes um, are double-stranded DNA, as you'd expect. But some are single-stranded DNA, just a single. Some are single-stranded RNA, uh, but then some are double-stranded RNA as well. And then the single-stranded RNAs can have what we call plus and minus sense, uh, which is the one is essentially reading as the same as messenger RNA, and the other is the um, complementary sequence uh, that you would find, say, in the transfer RNA, but in this in this uh, genome. So we'll get into that later, um, but. What is, a, what is a virus, what is a viral particle, um, is really going to be uh, a protein shell with its genetic material inside, and sometimes uh, a few proteins. But it doesn't have a metabolism, it doesn't have any ribosomes, there's no activity going on inside the virus. It's really just a package that carries around genetic material, either DNA or RNA. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't actually do anything. It's the cell that's reading information from the DNA or RNA that then will make copies of the virus. That information will then usually end up killing that cell, right? And then as the virus spreads to more cells, it ends up killing those cells, right? And so we'll kind of go into that whole process of um, the viral life cycle and viral infection and replication and assembly and all these different aspects of uh, viral um, study of virology. But uh, what we're going to start off with is just just structure, so the basic structure parts. So. I said, what is a virus? I called it a, a particle. Right? And so we're going to start off with something called a capsid, uh, which is really a protein shell. The capsid is made up of individual capsomeres, which are the, the protein monomers. So kind of, a, I have this little, little sketch, kind of sketch here. So what you have are these, these individual proteins, a little protein like that, that is assembled. And then the proteins are assembled usually along a type of uh, scaffold. And then they will make sides of this capsid structure. Now, um, this capsid structure, you can see here, uh, often, not always, um, is an icosahedral structure. Um, so an icosahedron means it's 20-sided. Uh, in general, they tend to be almost always polyhedral. So having many sides, but usually that number is 20. So the capsomeres are these in 
individual proteins that form into the capsid. The capsid structure can either be, um, it's going to be polyhedral, or it could be helical. So instead of being this kind of structure here, um, you could have, oh yeah, so hold on. Yeah, so if we did this, I'll, kind of, I'll try and so you, know, you can kind of see, um, you know, be something like this. Or it could be that the structure is the, the capsids arrange themselves into this helical pattern. And this helical pattern essentially forms, you know, that something that's almost more like a tube or a straw. Okay. And so this is the helical capsid, sort of tube-like. These then tend to be fairly long, all right, and so they can end up looking uh, when they're viewed under uh, electron microscope, kind of like vermiforms so kind of worm-like in structure just because they're long and as they get longer and longer then they start to bend and have that sort of a wormy structure to it. So we typically see one or the other for the overall capsid structure, polyhedral or helical. Now some viral particles like this are naked, which just means the protein shell alone. And that's it. And then there's genetic material inside. So inside this would be, you know, the, the DNA. You know, the DNA would be in here. Inside either the polyhedral or the, the helical capsid. Or not say that that'd be the naked virus, the naked viral capsid. However, some capsids are enveloped. An enveloped virus is where you have the, the capsid structure, but then surrounding the capsid, you have a membrane structure. Now that membrane structure um, comes from a host cell. So I'm gonna to try to give you a little bit of this here. So what would be happening is, if this is the host cell, um, This is the host cell membrane. Uh, inside this cell, the viral capsids are being made and manufactured, like this. And then the genome, we'll go over this process later, exactly all the steps and, and, and how this happens. The genetic material will end up being put inside these capsids. Now, what will happen is that some cells will eventually get uh, to what's called a burst size, and there'll be so many particles inside that the membrane will just burst and the cell will die and all the viral particles will be released. But for other cells, what will happen is that um, part of this genome that the virus has, the, viral, the virus's own genome, contains a code for proteins that are um, going to be associated with this sort of membrane, which we call the envelope. And these proteins are called spike proteins. Relate that. They're called spikes. They're proteins and they typically have sugars. So they're proteins that are coded for and then they have uh, um, sugars attached to them. So they're glycoproteins. Um, and they're made in this host cell. So the host cell will end up making, I'll try to give it a, a different color here, Got the orange, let's say. So the code, codes for these proteins. And then what will happen is a, a budding process. So the, um, the host cell will now start to bud like this. See that. And then a, um, a viral particle will get pulled into that structure. The Proteins, the spike proteins here will already be, you know, embedded into it. And so eventually what will happen through this budding process 
is that the I have I think a little extra markers here. Uh, is that the cell membrane buds out like this? Stuck in the cell membrane are these unique viral proteins, and then inside of that vesicle would be the viral particle, the capsid, right? Uh, and then inside that is its own, you know, DNA or RNA, whatever, it's genetic material. So this would be the enveloped one. Enveloped viruses um, are generally um, types of viral particles that infect animal cells, more so than uh, other types of uh, organisms. Partly because, well, some people have tried to study, you know, the, the naked viruses versus the enveloped viruses. Where did they come from? Who were their hosts? And, and so on. Like what types of cells um, are the hosts to these particular types of um, cellular parasites? And it turns out that cells that have a cell wall, like a bacteria, um, this envelope virus isn't very effective um, because the cell wall protects the bacterial cell um, from having this merge. See, the idea here is this, is now we have, say, another cell. This is a, say, healthy, I'll say a human cell. What will happen is this enveloped virus will then look for certain proteins that are receptors on the surface of that cell. And then it will go ahead and bind to some of those re receptors with these spike proteins. And when they do that, they'll end up um, fusing together. So they'll actually cause the two structures to fuse into one like this. And then that will allow the viral particle, the little capsid protein, uh, with its DNA to be able to enter into the cell. And now the cells become uh, infected with the, the virus. Having an envelope does a couple things. It both protects this virus. This is another layer of protection. But in addition to then having the spike proteins, which provide the binding to the specific host cell, um, they will also often carry with them then additional markers. So say, for example, there's other proteins. So the spike proteins are coded for by the virus. They're viral proteins that are made by the host cell. They get stuck in the host cell's membrane and then incorporated into the envelope. With those can come other proteins, ones that are not coded for by the virus, ones that are coded for by the cell, cell membrane proteins. When the envelope carries those away, it essentially has some of its own unique characteristics and the spikes, but it also has characteristics of the host cell, which means that when the immune system will come up to this enveloped virus, it'll recognize some of these proteins potentially as self, as being not foreign, but being actually part of its own cells. Uh, and so it won't attack it. So the enveloped virus in a way is kind of camouflaged, protecting itself against the host's immune system by carrying with it bits of the host cell's membrane and then proteins from the host cell membrane. So it makes it more difficult for the immune system to identify this as something foreign and then attack it and destroy it which allows it more time to then infect other cells. So it's why they're, they're particularly effective uh, and particularly dangerous um, types of uh, viral types of virus. So um, there are other proteins too um, that the, well, all kinds of proteins that we'll get into later that the virus codes for in terms of what we're talking about with the envelope. Uh, I mentioned the spike proteins are these ones used in binding. Um, there's also matrix proteins. So matrix proteins, um, are included with the envelope, but they are more structural. They're structural proteins that are associated with the envelope, right? Um, so they're not invo involved in binding. 
All right, so that's, we have proteins, individual proteins that get assembled into a shell like structure. That shell is called the capsid. In general, the shell is this 20 multi sided, often 20 sided structure that simply has the DNA or RNA inside it. It can also be a helical structure like this. You know, so this is these are the, the protein capsids have made a, a helical structure like this. Uh, and that's just simply called a helical capsid. Uh, and then the DNA or RNA could be inside there. Either one of them can be in, a, in, a, in an envelope. So you can also have an envelope you know, around a, a helical one as well. So that they could have it, or you could have a icosahedral or polyhedral one like that. Those then with the envelope are simply called enveloped viruses. So they still have the capsid, but in addition to that, they have a bit of membrane. The virus doesn't code for the membrane structure at all. The, the lipid structure, the phospholipid, that's taken or stolen from the host cell, but it does incorporate its own proteins into it the uh, structural proteins called matrix proteins, and then the binding proteins, unique ones that are called the spike proteins. Now there's one other group or class of uh, virus that I want to add in here. Um, and that is going to be a complex virus. Uh, and these complex viruses are generally uh, bacteriophage, which means these now are going to be the types of virus that actually infect bacteria. So we have what's called a complex virus. The complex virus will typically have its capsid head like this typically in that icosahedral structure. So the interesting thing is then next is a helical structure, pretty much just like the helical capsid, but here it's called the sheath. So you kind of have the two of them combined into one. Now, beyond that, there is then something called a base plate Made a protein and attached to the base plate are these, they look like little legs, but they're called tail fibers. And they're what's used in the complex virus to bind to the host cell. Inside here, can you have your, your genome, DNA, or RNA inside there? And then you're typically going to have, uh, also attached to that base plate are going to be pins. That are used to puncture um, and hold on to the cell wall of say a bacterial cell. So what would happen then is, if this is a bacteria cell, so this is now a bacteria, this, complex virus, now here called a bacteriophage, the bacteriophage will attach, it will then compress, and it will push through this sheath, the genetic material, after it kind of punctures into the cell wall, and then it will, it itself won't enter the cell, but the genetic material will. So only the genome enters the cell, the actual viral particle doesn't enter the cell in this particular case. All right, and that's kind of the overall structure of a complex virus. And we'll go into more of, there's a process called assembly. So we'll go through actually, you'll see this all again, all these parts again, uh, at, when we talk about the viral life cycle, the expression of viral proteins, um, early, middle, late proteins, and the you know assembly of those into the viral particle will be a whole process that we'll get into. This is kind of just the you know overview of the basic terminology and some of the, the different structural types of uh, viral particles.